So when it comes to portable nodes, there's a lot of different options. There's a lot of different ways to design it. Big, small, how complex you want it to be, how customizable you want it to be. Uh, this is one of the first ones I built. It I, was for a purpose that I had in mind. However, it probably only served that exact purpose maybe once or twice. A lot of the times I would actually reconfigure it slightly inside, change things around. Um, a lot of times that meant I had to run cables out of the top versus being waterproof like I designed it. But it still served its purpose. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to start building portable nodes, which a lot of people will do because typically, yes, you might build a permanent setup or permanent nodes in, throughout your town, but you're still going to need uh, some deployables to go to the actual incident, to go to that actual event and serve their purpose. So we'll show you some of the different ones that I've built, a couple that uh, Kyle, KD9SDK, has also built. Correction, KC9 SDK. And we'll like to see what you guys come up with too. You'll see these caps right here. These are waterproof pass through caps. Um, so actually, Cat 5 will pass through there. We can plug them right in. There's a shroud that'll actually screw right on here and keep your connection completely watertight. Um, these are an early version. Um, they're as you can see have been used and most of these chains have broken off but there's a couple different versions out there uh, and they all have their own advantages and disadvantages um, there are some that are a little cheaper than these I wouldn't uh, I probably wouldn't get these exact ones again but um, it's just a cool idea to, in order to keep this box 100% waterproof so this could sit out in the pouring rain and still have Cat5 coming out this side, and on this side, we spin her around, <clears throat> we actually have a power port there. So this is actually um, for a boat. I bought it at uh, a local uh, boat place, and uh, comes with a cord on the inside, and all I have to do is take my uh, extension cord and plug it right in. And there you go, you got power to the inside of the box. So next we'll look right inside the lid. So inside there's a few different things in here and it's nice to illustrate exactly what is required to make a node work. Now with some of the nicer switches such as the Ubiquiti or some of the different PoE options out there, you can combine uh, some of these devices together to condense it more now. However, when I built this, part of it was trying to do this inexpensively as well as with what I had on, on hand. So there's many different ways to do this, but this is the first one I built and it's obviously expanded and changed from there. So you see the power comes in here and goes right into this power strip I wired right in there and then we have our PoE injectors. So these inject the power and they send it directly right out to our pass-throughs on these uh, green cat fives. So we can plug our nodes right into the outside. Now the data side goes into this managed switch. Um, I mentioned before you need the managed switch in order to do the device to device link. Since this box in its current configuration is set up for two nodes, we can, we'll send the data into the Netgear a managed switch and that will make the connection between those two nodes. Now additionally you'll see that this there's this black box here. Uh, many of you will recognize this but this is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, now it's in a black case so you can't really see the actual computer board but on this Pi we have uh, Mesh Chat which is just a chat software that can be accessed by anything on the met, on the network as well as a PBX server. So if this box is placed into the network somewhere we can actually hook phones up to the phone server that's on this Raspberry Pi. Uh, the other thing you'll see is this Netgear right here that's hooked also into this managed switch. All this Netgear is doing is acting as an access point. So this allows
for us to use a phone, a computer, a laptop to get onto the network locally. Maybe this is placed in a location where multiple people could use it or we're just using it for a configuration and accessing the devices in here without having to hook a Cat5 cable right into your computer. Um, it also provides uh, multiple ports on the back that if we want needed to, we could hook additional devices. Maybe we wanted to add a switch in here to power some cameras. Um, we could hook another Cat5 into the back of this because it also acts as a dumb switch, meaning it doesn't uh, provide VLANs or, or anything like that. Um, and then we could expand the devices that are actually working on the mesh from this particular box. So, like I mentioned, I got the pass-throughs here on the side, and I actually labeled them on the inside. So we have um, power for power and data for node B and node A, and then a WAN port. So WAN, like I mentioned before, that's your wide area network or a connection to a separate network. So you need a managed device, managed switch in order to access one of those. So I could hook this up and hook it directly to an internet connection at my house or at a business or an agency and get out to the internet and then I could choose on the nodes whether or not to shove the internet back out over the mesh or just use it for a VPN link or something of that nature. So what it can easily look like is if I take off a couple of these caps and I have a TP-Link node here and we can plug right in there and that'll uh, juice that up and then I have another node here on this tripod and this is just a dish here and we'll plug that in as node B so now I've created a setup with a single 5 gig node and this is actually a 2.4 node so you could have these both pointed in the same direction and connect both 2, 4, and 5, 8 together to bridge any nodes that you have on separate uh, bands. So you see I'm getting the power there from the PoE injectors and then if, you may or may not be able to see that but we can see we have power there as well. Um, the bottom uh, pass through here is a LAN port so I could plug a computer in there or a camera or any other device I want that uh, would then act as a device on the network of a node. So um, it would get its IP address from one of these nodes and you'd be able to get to it over the mesh.